Welcome back to You Can't Handle the Truth here with Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our miniseries on Alfred Tarski's theory of truth, kind of looking at the linchpin or the central idea in his theory of truth known as Convention T. Now, before we get to exactly what Convention T is, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the other pieces that are coming in here and a little bit about Tarski's project. So, there are several questions that we can ask in regards to truth. We can ask of a set of statements what is true and what is not. From this, we can then ask if there is some property that all true statements have in common or some method of determining if something is true. Our previous theories of truth really attempt to do just this, to explain kind of how statements are true in virtue of corresponding, cohering, and so on. And maybe not all of our theories do this, but a lot of kind of the classic theories of truth do. Tarski is going to be asking a very different question. Instead of investigating possible properties which could make something true, he takes the investigation one step farther and asks, what makes a particular truth predicate an adequate definition of truth? What are the criteria that a particular theory of truth must satisfy in order to be considered an adequate definition of truth? No, we're not saying that these theories are perfect or that they don't have objections, merely that they are adequate at defining truth. So think of it like this. Generally, theories of truth try to separate true statements from false ones. So a theory of truth is going to go in here and delineate what is false and what is true, whereas another one might delineate it differently. Tarski, on the other hand, is going to be concerned with separating the adequate theories of truth from the inadequate ones. So he's going to look at all these theories, and he's going to come up with something that we're going to call Convention T, which is going to separate the adequate theories of truth from the inadequate theories of truth. All right. Before we get to Convention T, a few reminders, because it's been a while since we did this series. To understand what is meant by Convention T, we must also understand the distinction between a given language and its meta-language, between an object language and its meta-language. Remember, a meta-language is the language that we use to talk about an object language. It includes everything in an object language, though it may be translated, and enough mechanics to talk about the object language. We also need to remember that a theorem of a formal system is something that can be proven by the deductive rules of the system. If you want kind of a refresher on all this, watch the video that comes previous to this one in the series on formal languages. Now, finally, let's talk about Convention T. So, a key element of Tarski's Convention T is that the truth predicate, let's call it TP for truth predicate, is not and cannot be expressed in the object language. As soon as it is, the language will fall prey to such paradoxes as the liar's paradox. Therefore, TP will be a predicate of the meta-language, which will take descriptions of the statements in the object language alone. TP can't apply to things that are in the meta-language alone. Otherwise, once again, you're going to have paradoxical problems. And in a future video, we're going to look at exactly how Tarski's Convention T solves the liar's paradox for some languages, but doesn't for others. Therefore, with no further ado, Convention T can be expressed as follows, and I apologize if this is dense or confusing. We're going to try to hash it out as we move forward. So, some predicate in the meta-language, TP, will be considered adequate to express truth if and only if the following theorems can be proven in the meta-language, remembering what theorems are. All theorems of the form TPY, if and only if, P where Y is a description of a specific sentence in the object language, and P is the translation of that same sentence in the meta-language. And for all X, if TPX can be proven in the meta-language, then X must be a well-formed formula or sentence of the object language. If we can get to TPX, X must be part of the 
object language. It can't only be part of the meta language, because once again, that'll get into problems of paradoxes, as we noted before. As I said, that's pretty confusing, so we're going to take some time to look at it again. In other words, if and only if the translation of a sentence from the object language into the meta language can be proven in the meta language, then that sentence must be true. The truth predicate TP must apply to it. If that's the case for all sentences which are true in the object language, then TP is going to be an adequate truth predicate as long as also we can prove in the meta language that for any sentence that is true by TP, that sentence is part of the object language. There are no sentences that are only in the meta language that are true by TP, and we need a new predicate to talk about the truth of sentences in the meta language. Once again, it's confusing. Maybe that confused you more. Maybe it cleared things up. To make this really clear, we're going to look at a specific example. So, let's take a look at an example of this using a very, very basic language. The language contains only the following alphabet, 0 through 9, the plus sign, and the equal sign. Well-formed formulas consist in a string of numbers, which doesn't begin with 0, unless 0 is the only number, followed by either a plus sign or an equal sign, followed by another string of numbers, which doesn't begin with 0. And it can't be an empty string. It has to have at least one of those digits in there. Um, it can't begin with zero unless zero is the only number, followed by whatever sign was not present in the first slot between the first and the second string of numbers, followed by a final string of numbers not starting with zero unless zero is the only number. Note that that's not going to be the theorems of the language, but rather just the well-formed formulas of the language that move up from strings to well-formed formulas. Once again, if you're confused by any of this, check out the previous video on formal languages. It explains everything. To be clear, well-formed formulas are going to be things like 66 plus 70 equals 0, or 11 equals 7 plus 4, but not 6 plus 9 plus 7, 5 plus 2 equals 0, 1, 0, or 90 plus 1 plus 9 equals 100. All right, hopefully you have a little bit of sense of what a well-formed formula is going to look like. Now imagine further that this is a formal system, not just a formal language, with a deductive system, which allows us to deduce all and only the truths of basic addition as they're bounded by our syntax. Sure, we can't deduce any truths about basic addition that have more than two things that are being added together, but Within the constraints of the syntax, we can deduce all and only the truths of basic addition. We're not going to describe how the rules of that deductive system would work here in detail. You can imagine them. You've taken a basic math class. They're going to be relatively immaterial to the discussion at hand. Now, this language is going to have a meta language, so we're going to refer to this object language as BA for basic addition. We're also going to have a meta language, MBA, which includes all of the theorems of BA, as well as the mechanics of predicate calculus to talk about it, and a truth predicate that we're going to refer to just as T. However, to clarify that there is a difference between the meta language and the object language, for the meta language, all of the numbers are going to be translated into words. Therefore, the formula 7 plus 5 equals 12 in the object language will be translated to 7 plus 5 equals 12 in the meta language. Hopefully that's clear. So convention T will apply to our truth predicate T so long as for any and all statements of BA, which when translated are theorems of MBA. So it's true that 2 equals 2 plus 0, note that that's in the object language of BA, would be the case in MBA since and only since 2 equals 2 plus 0. Note that the second time it was stated in the meta language, the first time it was stated in the object language. Note that it would not be the case that it's true that 2 plus equals 2 plus 0 even, it's, though that seems like what we just said, since that statement, the way it's stated, is it's stated in the meta language, and our T predicate doesn't apply to anything in the meta language. It only applies to things in the object language. Since t doesn't apply to that, that's not going to be the kind of thing that can be true. It's going to be a category mistake, basically. 
it doesn't apply to any statement that only exists in the meta-language, only statements that exist in the object language. It's also going to be required that for all strings that are T, those strings are going to be part of basic addition. Once again, saying something very similar. This would be violated if, for example, it was true that 2 times 3 plus 4 equals 10, since 2 times 3 plus 4 equals 10 is not part of basic addition. It's not part of our language because we don't have a multiplication sign, and it's not going to be a well-formed formula. That was convention T. Hopefully you at least have a little bit of a sense of it. You have some kind of understanding going on. If you're still confused about convention T, if you're lost, you don't know what's going on, first off, check out the SEP. They have some great articles on Alfred Tarski and his theories of truth. But also, stay tuned here, because we're going to be using convention T in a couple more ways. If you want some more examples, we're going to be talking about Tarski and the liar paradox, going into that a little more next. And then finally, we're going to be talking about Tarski's theories and the indefinability of truth. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.